Chelsea Football Club at this moment in time can't do nothing right when it comes to Reese James. Looks like Reese James is out for a significant period of time and when I tell you how long, you're all gonna be angry. We need to have some uncomfortable conversations like certain people call it. Then, apparently the boys had a nice little parté after the Everton game that they lost 2-0. A lot of people have an issue with it. I'm gonna tell you what they got up to, why they got up to it, allegedly, and more importantly, I don't have a problem with it. It's gonna shock a lot of you. But the reality is, it's their free time. They can do whatever they want. And finally, it looks like Chelsea are going down the route of unknown again. We need a number nine, not Victor Osimhen, not Ivan Tony. We're just gonna go for another kid. Even though he's 25 years old, people are gonna say he's not a kid. This guy's not ready. I'm gonna give you the name of the individual. I'm gonna tell you why this will be a terrible decision. And I'm gonna tell you now, Paul Wynn Stanley and Lawrence Stewart, you are no longer at Brighton and Monaco. This is Chelsea goddamn football club, all right? I don't know why I had an American accent come out there, but the reality is, it is unacceptable to be doing this at Chelsea Football Club. Being seventh is celebrated at Brighton. Being 12th is accepted. That's not the case at Chelsea, and they need to understand that. And let's talk about this, let's break it down, let's get into it. Welcome to the Gaff Guys, you Bradduki. I am still feeling horrible and terrible. This flu is kicking my backside, left, right, and center. So if I sound a little bit like I'm dying, yeah, low key, I don't feel great. But and more importantly, if my eyes keep shutting, it's because the lights and I kind of need to sleep and all these antibiotics are kicking my ass. Before we get started, I need a massive favor from all of you. Can we reach 750 likes on this video? Because we've not been doing it recently and the video is just getting to a certain point of reaching X amount of people, but not getting any further. So start sharing it, like the video and subscribe if you're new, because clearly you've enjoyed it. You've made it to two minutes. So we're going to talk about Reese. James and the ramifications of this injury. All right, so Reese James at this moment in time is the captain of Chelsea Football Club. Reese James's career has really stagnated. I think if anybody says Reese James is one of the best players in the world in his position at this moment in time is a liar. And I don't want to be a liar, so you're not going to hear that out of me, purely based on the fact that he's never available. I don't remember the last time he's played five games in a row. I don't remember the last time he played three games in a row because it doesn't exist. Reese James's body keeps deteriorating in front of our eyes. And it's a shame because he's an unbelievably talented individual. This player is phenomenal. Like on his day, he's the best player in his position without a doubt. However, we don't see his day off the day off. What's happened? Chris James has got more hamstring issues. Yes, once again, hamstring issues. These hamstring issues are not leaving him. And he's going to be out after a scan this morning for approximately three months minimum. That's what the reports are from Fabrizio Romano, that's what the reports are from Chelsea, that's the, what the reports are from every source that's put in a timeline on it. This means it's not going to be March, it's going to be April. Because the reality is, if he's injured for half of December, January, February, recovery in March, back to play in April, that's unacceptable. And I'm not saying it's his fault, but I'm not saying that at this moment in time, we're allowed to be happy with it or not unhappy with it. Because the reality is we need our captain to play. We aren't good enough and Reese is integral. People are saying he needs to get the surgery. Where do you have the medical qualifications and access to Reese James's documents, medical documents, to have the information to make that opinion? You can't go around throwing accusations like he doesn't care, he doesn't want to. Trust me, no one is more upset about being injured than Reese James. It's his body, it's his career, it's his passion. We are spectators and fans from the side that appreciate the talent that he has. Nobody is going to be more broken and upset than him. The reality is what needs to happen now is Malo Gusto needs to become the number one, right? Don't want to see Axel de Sassi. I don't want to see anyone else playing in that position. For me, Gusto needs to play. He's defensively secure, one-on-one. -on -one. He needs to learn how to track runners and not switch off and allow people to run off him. And, but otherwise, he is more than capable to play right back. But it also will mean one thing. Pochettino has to, and I mean has to, use Matson at left back. Or we need to acquire a new left. Ben Chilwell is never fit, never ready to play. And I don't believe that he's good enough on the ball to do what I'm going to ask of him. And more importantly, Kukurea isn't. We know that. And neither is Levi Colwell. Neither player is as dynamic enough to, in that position, to like influence the game the way we want it. There is no Idoji. There is no Zinchenko. There is no even Luke Shaw caliber player. The three of them just aren't up to par and the reality is Chelsea need to upgrade. And if we want to become a serious organization one day, 
We're going to have to because you can't have Malo Gusto's attacking deficiencies matched on the other side because defensively he's phenomenal. Now getting into the secret party that happened and apparently after the Everton defeat, the 2-0 defeat where we basically didn't create many chances, we did not have a good performance in, the, in front of goal, everywhere else I think we were actually a very competent team. It looks like the one and only Chelsea boys had a party. So they came back to London, they ended up going to dinner as a collective. It was a very nice dinner apparently. And then some of them went to a nightclub. And guess what, Mr. Matt Law couldn't wait to report on this. And he says that certain individuals went out and they went out, out. they had a good time, little bit of wine, little bit of fun. And as per usual, social media has an issue with this, right? Because footballers are just robots allegedly and they're not allowed free time. And when they are off duty, all they have to do is sleep in a hyperbaric chamber like Goku and Gohan, right? Before they were, what's it called, going to fight Cell. And they need to repower themselves, regenerate and go back and start getting ready to do the Kamehameha on the, every opponent that's around them. That's what people want. The reality is they're humans. And I've got no problem with them having a Christmas party. And more importantly, I've got no problem with them, whatever they do on their day off, as long as it's club approved. And guess what? The club approved. The club and Pochettino were very happy with them to have a dinner and then go out. And I think this is important. And I'm going to explain to you guys why this is important. Number one. Maurizio Pochettino is a new manager with his team that is very young. You need to keep them engaged and you need to give them a carrot and a stick. This is the carrot. And the reality is, it could be very easy to tell them, no, you can't go to a party, you can't do this, and some of them are gonna break it. Some of them are just gonna end up calling people over to their house and they're just not gonna tell. And it's as simple as that. And the reality is, at least now Pochettino knows that he's in full control and when this story leaks, Chelsea go, listen, we allowed this to happen. And more importantly, and I think the biggest one, this squad lacks unity. It lacks togetherness because a lot of them don't know each other. What we done was rip out the culture. We need to get a culture on this team. And whether it's harmony amongst certain players to feel like the big dog in this team, or to feel like this is my club, or whether it's just a bunch of them to get drunk and have uncomfortable conversations with each other, maybe that will be inkling in the snapping point that gets them back into range. And on Pochettino's future, Fabrizio says he ain't going nowhere. Chelsea, yes, whilst they've changed their tune slightly, are the results are uncomfortable and unacceptable and they need to improve. And if they don't, there will be action that has to be taken. They're firmly saying they need to stick with Pochettino. And I think that is the right thing. I don't see a reason or value of sacking Maurizio Pochettino at this moment in time. I really don't. Whilst I think he is underachieving with his squad, I think he has been heavily hit with it. And more importantly, I think he has been heavily shorthanded with the squad that was given to him. That's just my perception. I know a lot of you disagree with me, but that's what we're here, right? To hear my perception, and then you guys to disagree with me or agree with me, and that's to have a healthy debate. So Chelsea at this moment in time are linked with a number nine. Maurizio Pochettino apparently is head first, like trying to get a centre midfielder, and he wants to get a defender, and more importantly, he wants to get a number nine. And the number nines that we're linked with are Ivan Toni, Victor Osime, and more importantly, now Victor Gorkos. I am really sorry for butchering his name. This individual is a Swedish international. He's got 19 games that played under the belt. He's got five goals scored. And more importantly, he's 25 years old. This is a terrible signing. I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, Sporting Lisbon have acquired this player last summer. This player has played 18 league game, 18 games in all competition at top flight football. Let that sink in. 18 games. He was at Brighton prior, never made it at Brighton, went on loan to Swansea, then he went to Coventry, done really well at Coventry in comparison where he had a one and three goal rate, stayed there for 93 championship games, and ever since then, he's just been moving to Sporting Lisbon and he's smashing it there. He's got uh, 15 goals in 18 games. And people are gonna say, Alex, why are you being so harsh? The reason I'm being harsh is because we don't have time for experiments. We don't have time for growing projects. I need proven. I need quality right now. And the reason I say I need quality is because if I get Ivan Tony, I know Ivan Tony scores goals for Brentford, meaning he can replicate it in the Premier League for Chelsea where there's more chances created. Give him the penalties as well. He will get you around about 20 league goals. I am crying for 20 league goals. Victor Osime, 
led Nice and led uh, to a very good finish and more, I think Lille, sorry, to a very good finish or whoever he was in, which club he was in France. I'm not like swift flipping my mind, but he led Napoli to a title. And do you understand how impressive that is to lead Napoli, a team that hasn't done it since Armando Maradona, like since Cavani couldn't do it, Levetsi, Hamsik, that core couldn't do it. Carlo Ancelotti's Napoli couldn't do it, but Spalletti's Napoli with Kravas Gelia and what's it called, uh, Victor Osime could do it. That is players that are proven, that, are play that is players that are coming in for the now. And more importantly for me, and I think this is massive, this kid is another experiment that Brighton or Monaco or Leipzig would take. We are not those clubs. We need players like Christopher Nkunku. We need players like Christopher Nkunku. We need players like Victor Sime. We need players that are gonna come in and the expectation is you hit the ground running, you're a face of the team. We need players like Raheem Sterling. I think we don't have enough Raheem Sterlings in this squad. Players that, you know what, even when they play bad, they contribute with GNA. And that's the problem. I think we have become so infatuated with, we need to buy the next best thing. Oh, we need to be smart. We're now overpaying on players that are projects, when in reality, we should be overpaying on players that are meant to come in. Like for me, I don't understand why we couldn't persevere with Lukaku this year. I know what happened off the pitch was massive, right? With Tuchel and Marina, but we had to find a way to resolve it, they're adults. If you have Romelu Lukaku in this team this year, there is no way Chelsea are 12. Chelsea will be maybe seventh or sixth, but Romelu Lukaku is sitting pretty on around about 10 to 11 goals because Chelsea have generated so many chances for Nicholas Jackson. It is ridiculous. There's no point singing the old hymn sheet. I just think it's very worrying that Fabrizio and Jacob Steinberg, I think his name is, are all linking us to the Sporting Lisbon striker. I don't want it to happen. Hit the like button, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Go and watch some of my old videos. Peace out. I'm out.